I guess we should set up the frame of reference who Isabel is and some of the other mm -hmm. characters. Isabel Dalhousie is a moral philosopher who lives in Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, she's uh, a person who edits a, a journal of uh, applied ethics, uh, and that brings her into contact with all sorts of practical issues of what is the right thing to do in particular circumstances. Uh, she is in the happy position of, of, of having a bit of money, so she has this uh, smallish job, uh, which doesn't pay very well as, as editor of that journal. Uh, she has a housekeeper uh, called Grace, um, who's, um, I suppose, uh, rather more practical than she, Isabel, is. And she has a niece called Cat, uh, who gets the wrong sort of boyfriend, and uh, that leads to certain difficulties. Anyway, there she is living in Edinburgh, and she is one of these people who gets drawn into other people's affairs, um, because she's, uh, well, I suppose, to put it bluntly, she's a bit nosy. Uh, but she also has a very strong sense of what her her duties and obligations to, to other people are, and so she uh, can't stop herself from helping other people. One of uh, the characters in the book is uh, an, one of Kat's ex-boyfriends, of, of whom they're usually awful, but he is really nice. Tell me about him. Kat, I think, goes for glamour uh, rather than uh, any other qualities. But she did have one very nice boyfriend, Jamie, um, who uh, was very good-looking, um, and played the bassoon, and uh, unfortunately, uh, because he was so suitable, uh, Cat decided to get rid of him, and uh, Isabel feels that this is uh, a very bad idea, or was a very bad idea, and she has a continuing friendship with this young man, who's 14 years uh, younger uh, than she is. Uh, he's uh, about 28, and she's in her very early 40s, so uh, she gets on very well with him, and she finds of course, that her feelings for him perhaps uh, become a bit more intense, uh, which gives rise to certain issues in her mind. Now, last time you were here, I, I had a little disagreement with you about uh, the nature of Isabel and Jamie because I said, "Why can't you know? Why should couldn't something happen with them? Because they're both really nice people." And you said, "Well, the age, Isabel just wouldn't go there." And I went, "I, I, I just I think you're not so as happy because." This book is about the two of them sort of stumbling towards something. Well, uh, your comments, uh, Craig, were, were echoed by other people who said to me uh, that I really must uh, let uh, Isabel and Jamie uh, get a bit closer. And uh, so uh, eventually uh, there's a bit of progress in that department in this latest book, In the Right Attitude to Rain. But of course, you see, Isabel, as um, a moral philosopher, will not just necessarily be thinking about what she wants and what would suit her. Uh, so she doesn't just think of whether it would be nice for her to have an affair with, with Jamie. Uh, she also thinks a lot about what is in his best interests, uh, which complicates matters, because obviously uh, there are many relationships uh, between people uh, where there's a fairly substantial uh, difference in terms of the, of the number of years that each party has lived. But People are different stages in their, in their lives, and you, you might get um, dissonance there, so to speak, uh, in that uh, there's Isabel in her early 40s. Uh, does she necessarily uh, want to uh, lead the sort of life that a, a, young, a man in his 20s would, would want to, to, to lead? That is a difficulty. She also has another sort of interesting dilemma, and that's uh, another couple that she meets who are engaged, but are sort of the opposite. Isabel and Jamie are afraid to start something. These two are afraid to stop something, but they're both obviously not happy with what they're doing. That's right. When she encounters this other couple um, who are visiting Scotland from um, Dallas, when she encounters them, uh, she sees a difficulty. She sees the possibility that this particular person who's engaged to, uh, again, a younger woman, um, she she's, uh, fears that that younger woman may may be interested in this man's fortune. He's very wealthy. And, uh, of course, if, if Isabel knew how to keep out of other people's affairs, um, one would just say, well, that's a possibility, but it's nothing to do with me. Uh, in fact, she gets drawn into that to try to find out whether, uh, whether this, uh, this woman um, is just interested in his money or whether she's uh, interested in, in him. Now, that's a classic case where you 
you come up, you, m you meet people, you come up against them, you meet them in a, in a fairly casual way. Isabel's invited to dinner with them and she sees them around Edinburgh and so she, she, she feels that she's, they've somehow entered her moral circle and that therefore she must ask herself what is going on here and uh, should I warn him, for example, that sort of thing. A twist at the end I did not see coming and uh, it's going to make the next book quite interesting. There is a, a bombshell in this book. Uh, few of my books have a real bombshell uh, but this one has a terrific bombshell, uh, which again I won't say anything about. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it obviously is going to make a difference uh, to how things pan out uh, in future novels in the in the series. It's a bombshell which I think many people, although very surprised by it, uh, they nonetheless will will feel well. This is a fairly positive thing. The book is The Right Attitude to Rain, an Isabel Dalhousie novel. I've been speaking with the author Alexander McCall-Smith and The Right Attitude to Rain, published by Knopf Canada.